short fluidization that is one fluidized bed reactors take the definition fluidization is the technique in which fine solids are transformed into a fluid like state through contact by a fluid in the bracket you can put either gas or liquid okay so the phenomena we will discuss through the diagrams i will draw these uh, diagrams so that the picture will be easy for you to understand gas or liquid then we have uh, this one we call it as uh, hp packet bed height okay able to see kavya okay so this is hp height of the packet bed and uh, yeah at very low gas or liquid velocities there is not sufficient energy in this phase fluid phase where it can move the particles but on the other hand what it does is it only tries to find out where is uh, wherever there is a small uh, interstices yeah through that it will move and comes out okay nothing happens at that time the bed remains as a bed and uh, of course depending on very low flow rates one can also measure the pressure drops that i will draw the graph later so at a particular point this situation ah this is fixed bed we can write fixed bed then same thing gas or liquid when you have uh, uh, this is the height still you have the particles very close just see here just a little bit more height this is h m f height at minimum fluidization velocity okay good so this is okay yeah. so as i told you when you slowly increase either gas or liquid nothing will happen at very low fluid at low velocities only the gas or liquid try to percolate through the pores and then when you go on increase very at uh, very small uh, uh, increments then the gas or liquid at one point of time the drag force exerted by this fluid either gas or liquid will exactly balances the weight of the solids in the bed okay so drag drag is a force weight in the gravitational field uh, uh, gravitational field is also a force so when the both the forces are same drag force balanced by the weight or weight balanced by the drag force then you will have the particle movement a letter uh, 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 a little bit yeah the particles move a little bit but still the bed is not expanding that much the particles try to readjust themselves okay for a more easy uh, i mean in a relaxed manner so then it will try to move in that restricted place a little bit you know like small vibrations small movement of the solids so at a minimum fluidization velocity if you look at the bed it is not exactly like a, you know vigorously solids moving but definitely solids will readjust themselves but capable of moving even at that time but uh, not to a great distances and the distance between each particle is also not that much so that is the reason why you have anyway this size this side and this side it cannot expand it has to only expand in this direction that's why i put this is packed bed it is slightly less 
because of the readjustment okay just because of the readjustment a little bit more but all the time we will take hp also equal to hmf at a minimum fluidization conditions okay but here at this point of time if i if i want to test the characteristics of this bed if i put a let us say an iron ball right yeah at this uh, here after the weight is balanced by the drag force if i put that steel ball then that will simply sink just for a comparison if you do the same thing here when the bed has not yet fluidized that means it is still in packed condition what will happen it will simply stay at the top so that means the density difference has come and uh, yeah not only that in fact if you have the cork also cork will just simply float exactly like it is in water not only that you have uh, if you have a small hole here then it flows like a fluid okay so just at the time of uh, minimum fluidization velocity at the point of minimum fluidization velocity try to have a hole here side wall okay then it comes as a jet it is exactly like if you have a water in a tank and then put a hole then it comes as a jet and also one more property if i slightly tilt this okay instead of uh, putting vertically if you slightly tilt like this so when you tilt this but still your uh, surface will be horizontal whereas that is not possible here in the packet bed conditions so that means what is that we have done already we have spoiled it because i think it was very happy stable without moving so then we made it as a fluid where it can easily move right all the fluid properties it acquired like density difference something can sink and also something can float and when you change the the direction to any inclined position but still all fluids maintain horizontal uh, surface right so same thing is there and if you put a small hole then it will like uh, it will come like a fluid all the properties what we normally see for fluids are seen for the solids in the presence of another fluid that is the reason why it is called fluidization okay that means you are imparting fluid properties to the otherwise immobile solid particles okay tremendous advantages okay because of this the first fluidized bed was in germany winkler uh, gasifier i don't know whether you have studied in uh, chemical technology winkler winkler w i n k l e r winkler gasifier that is one of the first uh, applications of uh, fluidized bed then later applications came to your fcc fluid cutter cracking so from then onwards unlimited uses of fluidized beds but in the beginning is first the gas fire i think that was 1921 1922 i think that time i am not very sure exact so uh, the advantage of this fluidized bed is that now you can if you want you can easily transport the solids from one place to the other place and uh, particularly you know in chemical engineering all the operations are multi phase and you should have better contact between these two phases now we have either solid or liquid or liquid liquid you know two immiscible liquids or gas liquid uh, you know you will have all kind combinations of the phases uh, in chemical engineering so our idea is how to have the best contact between these two phases so that kind of excellent contact will come here if i have a solid phase and then either gas or liquid i am trying to use okay excellent contact and theoretically speaking if i look at the particle in, a, in an ideal fluidized bed each particle is simply suspended by the fluid so that is why like uh, our fluid mechanics we always draw one beautiful circle as a particle around that you will show very nice streamlines okay so what is happening when i show the streamlines whether it is a heat transfer process whether it is a mass transfer process then beautifully each particle is uniformly either taking uh, if it is a mass transfer adsorbing or if it is coming out from the leaching and all that so beautifully comes out heat transfer also same thing Uni uh, heat is uniformly transported and on the other hand if you look at the uh, packed bed of the same height what happens packed bed is resting one above the other all the particles right so that means always some contact area will go for the solids that contact area is not available um, in the packed bed conditions okay uh, talking about the same particle size right and uh, normally we use the particles very very small particles in a fluidized bed 
to take care of our surface area per unit volume uh, advantage. That means, when you are going for smaller and smaller size, you know surface area per unit volume equation is 6 by d p diameter of the particle, surface area per unit volume. So, when you are decreasing particle size, surface area will be tremendously increasing. Okay. So, if you are going for 1 mm, then 0.1 mm, 0.01 mm, 0.01 mm is 100 microns, right? Oh, yeah, 10 microns, 10 microns. So, then go to 1 micron, then you will have tremendous surface area and we can use that kind of surface area also for the uh, for the solids, so that we will get very high transport processes, right? Good. So, that is the one. Now, be, uh, till here, we are almost in ideal conditions. This is fluidized, but beyond that, if you increase, what will happen? Beyond that, if I increase, let us first say only I have liquid. Okay, the behavior from here, the behavior if if I use liquid as the fluidizing medium, or if I use gas as fluidizing medium, the behavior changes. That's why first we are taking a liquid. So, if I take liquid and then go for example, yeah, at this point I can also say that I have EMF, the velocity corresponding to this minimum fluidization condition is EMF. So, beyond this if I go and let us say I am using 2.5 times or 3 times EMF. right? So, then if I use that, then beautifully this expands in the presence of liquid. Why I am telling beautifully is the interparticle distance between the okay yeah the interparticle distance in the bed is almost uniform when you have liquid and that's why we call this one as smooth fluidization or particulate fluidization particulate fluidization right it is very nice. To see, one can easily predict also the length of the bed, how it is expanding, and uh, we can just imagine here beyond minimum fluidization velocity, the drag force, of course, uh, is just balancing. So, beyond that, you are increasing velocity. So, drag force will be definitely more. So, when it is more, what is happening, how it is transformed, the drag force is transformed in the form of expanding the bed. Okay? But if you take the pressure drop, I will come to the pressure drop later. At at this point onwards, you have the same pressure drop for the solids. Weight is not changing, right? I mean, weight is same. Weight is not changing. So keeping the weight same, and when you increase the say, drag force, okay, by changing the liquid, um, uh, by changing the liquid velocity or uh, gas velocity, so the pressure drop is not going to change. Only thing is, in the bed, you will have different conditions coming. Right. So, like that it is in the particulate fluidization condition, the pressure drop will not change, but the bed can be very smoothly varying. Now, the same situation if I show for uh, gas, it is not so smooth. So, you will have here a bed, these are the bubbles. So, you will have small bubbles forming here, growing like this, even though we take spherical bubbles, they are not like that. Yeah, this is the bubble. gas bubbles will form and these bubbles are not seen in the liquid solid fluidization. Okay? And the reason for uh, the bubbles, I think we do not know it uh, exactly, but we know how they form, because whenever I have a perforated uh, plate and with a small perforation and the solids are just resting on that, the gas has to move through that. So, when it is moving, it will try to push the solid slightly away from the from its way. So, when it is pushing, so then there will be a wall like thing just above the that area. 
so that wall this wall is nothing but solids only solids only just forming like this so when it is just pushing it up then they form that wall and the wall cannot break because just after that also you have lot of solids so it's not breaking so the entire bed almost in the small void there it will try to push it up and beyond here at the top because there are no further solids there then it has to break and when it is breaking then all the solids till then it is just moving like this okay yeah just moving and then uh, when the bubble breaks there all the solids now cannot be supported by anything there is nothing to be supported so they simply fall when they are falling they come to the bed that is how you have good mixing in uh, gas solid fluid aged beds because of this bubble formation and the bubbles are not there at a minimum fluidization velocity that is why at this point whatever uh, gas you have all the gas is used only to support the solids but here when i have that you know 2.5 times or 3 times as i told you the gas velocity then that extra gas beyond what we used for minimum fluidization velocity extra gas beyond minimum fluidization velocity that goes in the form of gas so that's why many researchers accepted that if i am sending u as the velocity and uh, the uh, velocity at minimum fluidization is umf so u minus umf multiplied by cross sectional area is the volume of gas that is in the bubbles correct no u is the actual gas let us say 10 liters okay i mean velocity wise and now directly i can tell volumetric flow rate wise and i need only 2 liters per hour or, or, or 2 liters per minute as the gas required for minimum fluidization velocity so that extra 8 liters per uh, minute is the gas that is going in the form of bubbles okay it's not exact measurement but i think this is very difficult uh, contacting pattern for gas solid right so that is why it is not exact many people say that no 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 some other gas is going this way that way still fighting is going on but still majority of the gas goes only in the form of bubbles and the our imagination is that there is no other way to go to uh, to, to go for the bubbles okay i mean uh, for the gas to go so that is why either it has to support the solids and go otherwise it has to go as bubbles right so that is the reason why you have here a kind of uh, aggregate fluidization where it is not uniform because why it is not uniform where the bubbles form where the bubbles break you cannot say in fact when you have this situation you can do that experiment in your house also take a water uh, you know put in a some vessel and then bubble it just look from the top can you find out at what point bubble come and then what point bubble breaks you cannot same thing happening so that's why some people say that this is also boiling solids we don't see the bubble we see only the wall uh, you know the empty space in the solid the empty space in the solid is seen as bubble okay and people have photographed i will also show you that photograph later okay some uh, uh, photographs have been taken and i think people thought that you know the, the, there are definitely bubbles okay it is one that's why many people still have lots of doubt uh, if gas liquid one can see no, that is what no normal things those are all low hanging fruits what we say okay when you are able to imagine when you are able to see very clearly okay so then the description of that understanding of that is much easier but something beyond our mind if you are not able to see and then you have to imagine okay so that is why a measurement is required where you because you are not able to see that of course you can see that when you have a glass column but i think you know that voids and all that definitely can be seen but to be still perfect and measure it and then find out what kind of bubbles we are getting why they are coming under what conditions like for example that also depends on your velocity that also depends on particle size okay particle density all kinds of things will come how the bubbles are forming right good so that's why this is not no more smooth fluidization this is called aggregative fluidization aggregative so essentially what we have to remember here is that till minimum fluidization velocity whether you have gas or liquid doesn't matter because both are going to behave same way same way and then beyond that when you are using liquid fluidization liquid solid where liquid solid applications also after biochemical engineering there are many for example wastewater 
is one of the applications uh, you know uh, liquid solid systems in fluid agent, in uh, using fluid agent beds okay of course leaching you know one method of extracting uh, uh, yeah ores is leaching so if you want to take from copper, copper from copper ore you take copper ore and then fluidize with uh, sulfuric acid for example you will get copper sulfate and again copper sulfate you take it to electrochemical cells and then sulfur uh, so for separately cu separately you can deposit right yeah cu so then you get one of the purest form that's how zinc and copper and all kinds of uh, things they do but that is the leaching operation where fluidized bed can be used why fluidized bed is very good there is that you can have small particles number 1 in packed bed you cannot have that kind of particles and number 2 uh, surface area is more so then the rate of uh, leaching will be very high and on the other hand every particle will be uniformly fluidized particularly when you have liquid system then um, uh, on the whole each and every particle is uniformly leached out you know that uh, can be used for leaching each and every particle so like that there are many examples which we can give and uh, uh, liquid liquid solid and there is not many exciting things in liquid solid because everything we know what is going to happen there correct no because there are no bubbles whereas here many many exciting things because first of all i don't know how to measure the bubble perfectly and the people who have measured the bubbles are only two dimensional bubbles what they measured three dimensional bubbles they could not measure they only estimate by some technique okay by sending light for example or by sending some uh, no, not tracer the not nmr also this one uh, radioactivity uh, you know some signals they send from this to that side nowadays i think people trying to use what is called tem uh, transmission electro uh, yeah so that kind of sophisticated methods are now coming to measure okay and that to measure it is a three, when you have a three dimensional column you will have some bubbles here back side also you have some bubbles this side also you have some bubbles this side also you have some bubbles which side you measure whatever side you focus that is not uniformly reproduced all the time okay so that's why they take from various sides and then average the bubble size bubble size is one of the most difficult parameters which we have to estimate properly and that itself is the starting point for all our calculations so that is the reason why it is very difficult gas solid fluidization okay good and because it is very difficult there are challenging things if it is very simple i think you know there is no problem at all because there is the phenomena is so complicated that is the reason why i, I told you that you have many exciting things in gas solid fluidized beds okay then uh, ah next one if you have let us say i have done the same thing here beyond this minimum fluidization velocity in a small this kind of column okay very narrow column if you take narrow cross section then what you see is this bubbles occupy the entire cross section and then somewhere here they break because of instability okay yeah so these are the please remember uh, if you have uh, when it is going up near the walls you will not have that much drag because velocity we take zero you know near the wall so the solids will be slipping near the wall somewhere it will go up and then because of some instability it will go to the almost to the top okay if there is no disturbance but somewhere if you have disturbance means many many chaotic conditions that's why you know uh, i don't know whether you heard of there is a, what is called a chaotic theory for each and everything there is chaos in this world in this universe not only world so that's why if with, with maybe with a sm very very small fluctuations or very very large fluctuation large fluctuation means we feel small fluctuation means we don't even notice them but everything can be analyzed in terms of only this kind of fluctuations right so chaotic theory that means system is not stable it is chaotic but people see that there is an order in the uh, in the chaotic environment there is still an order no if you go to mount road and uh, if you stand there for some time first time it looks very chaotic i don't know why people are going this side car is going this side i think bullock carts may be going that side and all that you observe that let us say one week you will find a pattern how 
How do you find a pattern? The same eight in B bus will come all the time. Okay, really, twenty three C will go there. So if you are able to uh, I mean, look patiently there, you see some pattern coming. Maybe there is some bench car that same bench car because that fellow's office maybe somewhere there near us. Okay, so always you know when you patiently observe that you will find a pattern. So that is what you know order out of chaos. I don't know whether there is a wonderful book which I could not complete in last twenty years. I think I told you know. Uh huh. James Gleick is chaos. That is a beautiful book to read. The other book is uh, that Ilya Ilya Prigogin. You heard of him? Prigogin, P R I G O G I N E. He is a Nobel laureate in chemistry. He wrote this book, uh, Order Out of uh, Chaos. Okay. Actually, he wrote that in French, and someone translated into English. Horrible translation, because that's why I think nothing moves there. Uh, there is no flow in that book. Oh my God! How many years I have? The, I have that book, guys. I am not able to still complete. But there is wonderful information about thermodynamics, about biological systems, all order. And how do you see? Sorry, all chaos. How do you see order out of that? James Gleick is beautiful book. Once you start like novel, you can read. Okay, but the other book is very very difficult. Where tremendous amount of information is there, excellent information. So that is why here also because of those fluctuations, somewhere it, because of instability, the slugs will break, and then all the particles will come down. When they are coming down, uh, again you know some of the uh, bubbles also may be. Uh, uh, broken and that's why some of the fluidization uh, researchers thought that let me take because you see you see how human mind works because to break the uh, problem into simpler problem so is it difficult uh, is it easy to have thousand bubbles and then try to characterize thousand bubbles or one bubble and then try to characterize one bubble so that is why what they did was okay let me take the small diameter column okay let me create slugs and let me understand how the slug because there is only one slug any time correct no so that is why but most of the time what happens is when you have this kind of thing it is too much aggregative fluidization and this is a big void most of the time in the bed if you see there will be only 20% or 10% solids the rest is only Gas, uh, gas bubbles. You know, one bubble that means one bubble here, another bubble there, another bubble there. Maybe five, six bubbles will occupy, but that bubble is very slug, you know, very lengthy bubble, and uh, occupying the entire cross section. So it's not allowing to solids to have many solids. So that's why they try to break it. But particularly Australians, there are few who are trying to do that, and this is called slugging bed. Yeah, there are many things here. You know, this aggregative, uh, as I told you. when you have more and more knowledge you also try to look more 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 and more narrowly between uh, velocities okay between aggregation and then if i go slightly more than that what we call what we call as turbulent bed okay the difference between aggregative and turbulent is the bubbles are slowly trying to dissolve okay dissolve what dissolve to go for pneumatic pneumatic anyway that means when uh, around terminal velocity the bubbles may disappear solids may try to go out okay so another concept is i think definitely you would have heard of circulating fluidized beds circulating fluidized beds no not heard i told 1000 times i say in the last semester also anand kumar looks as if it is a new word for him latin or greek you have not heard don't remember okay ha ha final yeah so you allow the entrainment and then bring the solids again continuously and circulate them okay what is the advantage because now i don't have bubbles i can clearly find out what is going what is happening at least in the bed but what is the uh, uh, drawback drawback may be that the amount of solids in the bed may be small so normally it happens around 15% solids 20% solids whereas here i have 50% solids and also 60% solids okay 60% is more around 50% because normally packet bed will have how many, what percentage have you know packet beds will have what percentage of solids normal packing spherical particles kavya uh, ah how can you have 80% i said in packet bed packet bed has also porosity 
uh, which one is 60 you are talking about void edge or uh, solids i have asked solids Why does it sixty percent? I know, uh, Andra. Call it forty to fifty percent. Call it, huh? Solid, solid. Ah, solid. What did he say before that? Forty to fifty percent. Forty to fifty percent. Why forty to fifty percent? It is a packed bed. Under what conditions it will be forty? Under what conditions it will be fifty? Then it is. Prabhu will give nice answer. Prabhu, what? Fifty percent solid, sir. Ah. 5 percent increase, 65 percent solids. Why 65 percent? Told you no. Beautiful, eh? That is the reason I asked you. <laughs> At the end, you are the final answer. Okay? Yeah. Always averaging things. Okay. I think uh, like Buddha's uh, thing. Take the middle path. If you take extreme path, you have to unnecessarily work hard. Take the middle path. Happy, no problem. No one can push you that corner. No one can push you this corner. Walk, okay. But that's fundamental thing. It seems take the middle path always in your life. Don't be an extremist. That is the idea. Okay. Yeah. You tell me why forty and why fifty? Sixty-five is not correct. Forty-five. <laughs> See, in material sense, they derive and then show it also. I say, if you have ideal. Spherical particles, how much uh, fraction you get? Huh? Size it will not depend if you have spherical shape. particle. Shape. shape is spherical, I am telling, no? Yeah, spherical, spherical. Exactly, there is around you know 0.32 or something you get. Structure if you take that is. Uh, Wide edge, I am talking. Wide edge is around 32, and the, you have uh, 60% uh, solids. Okay, in packed bed, because they are not 100% spherical, most of the time we can take around 40% wide edge and 60% solids. If I take 100 liters, I will have 60 liters of solids and uh, 40 liters of wide edge. Okay, so that's what. Yeah. So uh, th that's why now the operations depend on on what regime you operate. Like for example, next one is we have pneumatic conveying. Here again, it is same, either gas or liquid. Again, you come back to the original, to the same. Okay. So when you go to the pneumatic conveying, you have only few solids. That is pneumatic regime. So that means solids are. We say pneumatic regime, but I think you know hydraulic, hydraulic regime also. We will say where the transportation of solids are occurring because of water, okay, liquid. So this is pneumatic again, but doesn't matter whether you have liquid or solid, you will have this. So what are the basic conditions here? Basic conditions for fluidization. First of all, it should be vertical. Huh? <laughs> you should take a vertical column, <laughs> okay, and then put a distributor plate. Put a distributor plate. And then the distributor design also is one of the very very important crucial factors, and uh, then in slowly increase the velocities such that the entire bed is supported by the drag force of the fluid. And beyond that, if you increase, then we, if you have a liquid system, it nicely expands. Nicely expands means anywhere smooth fluidization, and the interparticle distance is uniform throughout the bed, etc. And if you take the same condition, that means 2.5 umf or 3 umf, and then conduct the same thing with gas, right? So the gas will have aggregate fluidization where the gas goes in the form of bubbles. So that creates aggregations, and uh, that also creates good mixing. In fact, you will not have that kind of good mixing here. You will have here very good mixing for solids. That's why Leonspiel says that you know thallic anhydride is the plant where uh, chemical engineers design. It seems. Uh, Any chief engineer designing thallic anhydride plant, plant, okay? If you ask them to sit on the plant just before uh, uh, start up, it seems he says that very few chief engineers would have left in the world because definitely something will happen and explode. Chief engineers, chief engineer will be converted into some other uh, mass, okay? Yeah, maybe operate. Anything can happen. 
so that is the reason so so for that to control that kind of heat you know that is generated if you want to dissipate that heat this condition is the best condition okay this is what also what they do you know circulating fluidized bed before circulating fluidized bed there was fluidized bed combustors i don't know whether you heard of them or not Th these are not uh, you know myth they are reality where they are working in thermal power plants what they do is they take very big size fluidized beds fluidize coal continuously feed the coal Conti yeah, i have told here uh, batch only but continuously also we can do that like experiment nothing will change okay if you are maintaining the same bed and all that so coal particles will be continuously fed and uh, burning combustion is taking place now you put inside heat exchangers cooling coils they are not actually cooling water water pipes water tubes so then water will get uh, evaporated to steam that steam will come out you know after getting sufficient steam then that is attached to your steam turbine the turbine is attached to generator from there we will get ac and all that okay yeah really so that is why fluidized beds you know uh, uh, when compared to other beds this is very easy because particularly what happened was when people started thinking about environmental pollution if you have uh, so2 s as the one of the constituents in the coal that will become so2 so2 will come from the chimneys that is dangerous okay that is even spoiling taj mahal okay sulfur falling on taj mahal because uh, how sulfur is falling on taj mahal yeah where is acid there madura yeah, madura refinery madura refinery is refinery also will uh, you know desulfurization there is one step so the sulfur has to be removed so if you are not able to contain that only inside the reactors or inside the process equipment when it comes out then this acid rain will fall and unfortunately uh, shah jahan used uh, calcium carbonate which is reactive material it's not inert if he has used granite nothing will happen whatever you do okay yeah granite also will slowly dissolve you know some other things yeah so this uh, ca uh, calcium carbonate reacts with h2so4 forming calcium sulfate so after some time you will have calcium sulfate taj mahal okay <laughs> so you even now if you go and uh, layer by layer if you see probably already first one or two mm or 3 mm 4 mm would have gone okay so that is the problem so at that time what they thought was that the sulfur can be contained and also nox is a problem um, all these things are problems now in uh, pollution so uh, with the temperature control you can control nox you can control so2 and all that and another beautiful advantage in fluidized bed that to remove sulfur dioxide is you know you don't allow that one to go to chimney what you do is when you are sending when you are sending uh, coal continuously you also send along with coal calcium carbonate calcium carbonate taj mahal only you make powder <laughs> you make powdered taj mahal and then put it inside what will happen because at that temperature calcium carbonate going to calcium oxide is very very fast it is a non catalytic reaction which you already discussed ha huh? Ah, type C reaction, CaO, CaO will form. That is instantaneous. What do you call that? Uh, calcination. Calcination step is instantaneous. Then that becomes CaO. CaO is highly reactive, and you have in the coal sulfur. From su sulfur will react with uh, oxygen in this because combustion. No, you have to send oxygen anyway. So sulfur uh, dioxide will form. CaO plus SO2 plus half O2 will give you CaSO4. CaSO4 is now solid. It is not going to Taj Mahal now. It is only at the bottom you will collect and try to use CaSO4 for something. Okay, CaSO4 is nothing but gypsum, no? Yeah. So, huh? ah, that, that depends on you know hydration and all that. Okay. So uh, anyway, that can be used. That is the reason why they are only trying to convert the problem gaseous pollution into solid pollution because if you are not able to use this calcium sulfate uh, that is gypsum then that is a waste again again you have to dump somewhere when you dump it again because uh, calcium uh, sulfite is a unstable compound calcium sulfate is stable and uh, sometimes calcium sulfite also will be there in this conversion it's not 100% converted to calcium sulfate so that will leach out and then sulfur again will go into water and all that 
we are doing a wonderful job as chemical engineers polluting the entire world okay that is what is our great contribution other things are great well, there but this is also one of the greatest contributions now huh yeah unless you prevent you know you have to prevent that's why only we have green uh, chemical engineering green chemistry all that you have to do it okay yeah so that's why please show some interest in chemical engineering okay <laughs> all of you i say <laughs> all of you where is interest in chemical engineering i say if you have real interest in chemical engineering you cannot uh, you know ask for only marks you will ask for a project sir i want to do this i want to do this i want to do this how many projects are there how many things are there are you asking anything you are not asking anything no now you have you play everything you take a tennis bat where it is manufactured by nano carbons you know carbon tubes yeah and then you play very well and with the carbon nano carbon also i think some dresses many things are made and you don't know who has made it and then you only play cricket uh, tennis and then throw the tennis bat out where is the pride for you i made it as chemical engineer you made it okay even you use car very happily driving or running or you know all that but you never feel that it is running because of petrol which you manufactured where is the pride for you there is no pride why there is no pride because you are not involved very simple my logic is very simple if you are involved you cannot stop staying that every time you see that oh petrol chemical engineer okay so anything like that cement building whenever i see building ah oh, beautiful chemical engineering no really even computers computer science people think that they are doing so many wonderful things they can only do provided you give the floppy disks for them yeah hardware yeah materials okay uh, they this uh, cds and all that manufactured by us but still you don't even know that you are not proud of it okay so that's why history is very important what earlier people have done what you are going to do so that's why that's why you are not involved i think happy okay whether it comes in the examination or not that's all that is the sole motto from joining date 1 to finally till you get in the sac building uh, that uh, you know yeah that degree certificate called uh, yeah uh, in in the convocation degree certificate that useless paper right that is that will be useless if you don't know anything in that field i say really useless okay so but anyway all these things i am repeating so many times but in your mind all these subroutines are going on thinking that this idiot is talking all the time same thing okay yeah this is matrix no so you are in your own matrix calling me that this fellow tells only this nothing else okay good yeah so this is pneumatic conveying and now the fluidization yeah beyond somewhere here you have it if i take that as ut terminal velocity your fluidization range is from here to here that's why as i have been telling you all the time you know you have the flow de, not flow what is that flow regimes even here we have a flow regime beyond this no one can operate that as a fluidization bed and beyond this also no one can operate yeah, till here yeah so beyond this also beyond this also no one can use that one as a fluidization bed because it's not simply fluidizing so that is the range of fluidization but in between you have so many operations like you know this is normal conventional fluidization bed then you have slightly turbulent or aggregative fluidizer bed then you have here in between i have not shown you circulating fluidizer bed all that depends on how much solids you have in the bed right aggregative fluidization and turbulent fluidization and normal fluidization you will have 60% solids 50% solids 40% solids till aggregative and also turbulent beyond turbulent the uh, the particle starts coming out so at that time it you will have around 20% if you are able to operate around 20% then you have circulating fluidization bed beyond that if you go to only 3% solids 3% pneumatic conveying normally we get that so then you will have pneumatic conveying and beyond that no operation is feasible so all these things are there okay good i know none of you will write all these things because why what uh, uh, anurag yeah yeah i don't know you don't write yes sir <laughs> correct because you think that this is simply waste of uh, 
paper waste of pen okay why should i write because it may come or may not come in the examination till then is my duty after my duty is over that's all who wants this throw the particles and uh, books and then go and join somewhere else what a great great generation we have i say no respect for what we do what we are supposed to do not what we do what we are supposed to do okay all of you i am not only talking about them okay and then they may throw this uh, that book 10 kilometers away you may throw 1 kilometer away that's all the difference okay that's all that's why it hurts us you know most of the time because when we are excited and then telling you sit there like a statue probably statues statues would have reacted okay real statue if you take and uh, put there and then talk 40 hours probably it will have some kind of movement there but here you have movement become finally statues okay good yeah so now if you want to understand this fluid aged beds we need some parameters <coughs> yeah i think anyway before that i think we will have the advantages and disadvantages what are the advantages in using the fluid aged beds yeah okay good control of solids that is one and then excellent heat and mass transfer transport processes inside that okay so um, heat and mass transfer rates are very high in the bed that is one smooth and control flow of solids and number 3 is isothermal conditions which prevent hot spots isothermal conditions which prevents yeah hot spots due to vigorous mixing of solids vigorous mixing of solids what are the disadvantages because i think you know whatever you do definitely there will be some uh, particle particle collision some powder will always generate right so due to attrition that that is a disadvantage that is called attrition due to attrition of solids because we are talking about uh, this one as a reactor so the catalyst may go out of the due to attrition of solids to uh, the uh, weight of catalyst may decrease in the bed uh, that will come which pressure drop is more okay then what is the other other uh, disadvantages attrition is one where you lose solids right yeah yeah anurag any other why why if pressure drop is uh, bed is high in uh, packed bed what is happening in fact packed bed gives you more uh, more pressure drop than fluid aged bed so that's why pressure drop is not a problem because if you are using the same velocities okay like 2.5 minimum pressure velocity like that the pressure drop in the uh, packed bed will be much more than fluid aged bed pressure drop is not the disadvantage so the anything else Uh, range of velocity is umf and ut because beyond that you cannot go ah uh, particle diameter that again because the capacity is fine yeah and then after a certain point of uh, diameter you have to uh, throw gas in at a very high fluid which yeah. may not be but that's not disadvantage no that is only possible operational risk okay that's not a disadvantage because no one would like to have atoms uh, to be fluidized sometimes it will help also it to get smooth fluidization they take slightly coarse particle add fine particles so then it seems you will get better fluidization so this always counterintuitive and you get kick when you have counterintuitive things Auto automatically what you imagine in your mind and what is happening is same there is no kick no Why? Because of solid interaction. So there might be because of solid. Because of the interaction with the solid. Yeah, if, if you are taking that one as a catalytic uh, reactor, catalyst is the, uh, the the solid particle, right? Where is the purity coming? Because reaction occurs in the particle, inside the particle or outside the particle, 
on the catalyst and then anyway product will diffuse out and then comes out. What you are talking about the particles coming with the gas? Those uh, we have we are masters of that. What do you use? Cyclones, not one, ten. Also can use depending on particle size that is coming. So, you can use one first cyclone, second cyclone, third cyclone, four, five cyclones also people use. And beyond that also if you are not able to take from the cyclones, then what is that use? Filters uh, block electrostatic precipitators, ESP plants, very common. Okay? So, all those things are there, all those things are there. Unfortunately, you are not putting your mind to assimilate your knowledge. I think definitely professors would have told you in particle technology and all that. Deactivation advantage, uh, disadvantage what you are trying to tell? Uh, actually, when uh, you have a deactivating catalyst, fluid is bed is excellent. Yeah, it is very good. You can take out the particles like water okay, and then feed continuously. Always you know you can maintain some amount of fresh catalyst inside the bed. It is not fresh actually, mixed and fresh. Yeah. Regenerate you can use like if you are using like FCC, okay. take out all the solids, take the regenerator and then send it back. There is another one because this uh, oh, one o'clock. Okay. So, this uh, fluidizer bed is it equivalent to CSTR or, M, uh, or uh, plug flow reactor? Solids are in perfect mixing condition. Is it disadvantage or advantage for reaction? That is one of the disadvantages. Why? Because concentration gradient is not much. So, what do you do? What do you do to overcome that? This is, what do you do if you want to go towards plug flow, you are using only mixed flows? That is all. So, people use two or three fluidized beds. Okay. You know how beautifully they use that? They use like this. This is one down comer, another down comer another down comer, if you are using only three, this fellow comes out. So, this is gas, these are solids, coming out solid, solid, gas, gas. This is just CSTR 1, CSTR 2 or mixed flow reactor 1, MFR 1, MFR 2, MFR 3 it is just one above the other. You need not put one above the other, you can also put parallelly. One here, next one, next one allows of gravity because it is like a fluid. So, it comes from one bed to the other bed, if you are maintaining certain gravity you know a certain level. So, automatically it comes. So, that is why if you want to you know you have to write there non uniform residence times, you know when you have a mixed flow, you have non uniform residence times for the solid phase. Okay? That is the disadvantage. Why it is a disadvantage? Because if I take coal combustion for example, right? solids are in the perfect mixing condition. Because of mixing some particles will come out very quickly and practically the combustion in that, in that particle is almost and there may be another particle which is over burnt and then only ash is left. On the other hand if you take exactly our plug flow reactor each and every particle would exactly burn depending on the time which you have given maybe 10 minutes or maybe 10 seconds whatever. So, that is why you get uniform combustion there, but here also you will get uniform combustion, but at low level okay? at low level because you have at any time uh, coal must be large amount you have to put to compare with the to, to, to compare with the ideal plug flow reactor correct no. That is why in fact, for a given uh, conversion, why CSTR will be bigger and plug flow reactor will be smaller is the residence time distribution problem. One easy example which you can remember is coal combustion. Okay? So, certain amount I am burning in a plug flow reactor, but if I want to get the same conversion in mixed flow, I have to necessarily use larger bed because the total amount of solids, some converted, some unconverted, all that must compensate the ideal plug flow reactor where all solids are uniformly burnt. So, that is why you will have bigger size for mixed flow and smaller size for plug flow for given conversion. Okay? So, that is why yeah. So, this is one of the disadvantages 
and there is another disadvantage you know uh, attrition we told okay that is one that is with respect to particles but with respect to walls of the reactor you have attrition okay or erosion i don't say attrition erosion of the walls and after some time wall may disappear shrinking core model yeah wall thickness keep on decreasing because of like shrinking core and finally disappearing wall wall will disappear because always you know uh, the the solids are moving at very high velocity it will erode erode erosion takes place so slightly you may uh, lose some of the material of the wall and thickness will be smaller if it is high pressure and all that it may burst after some time that is another disadvantage okay so i think this is fine and uh, next class tomorrow morning first hour we will now try to find out what are the parameters you should